When you eat pizza, you gotta do the New York fold. Uh, actually, I prefer the Spokane Washington undertuck method. This, this is a hot, hot dog, dog is a sandwich. sandwich. Ketchup is a smoothie. Yeah, I put ice in my cereal, so what? That makes no sense. A hot dog is a sandwich. A hot dog is a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> what? Welcome to our podcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich, the show where we break down the world's biggest food debates. I'm your host, Josh Sher. And I'm your host, Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> and also known as Pasquale's Pizza and all the predatory ghost kitchen apps. <laughs> or um, Charles Entertainment Cheese. Charles Entertainment Cheese is his legal Christian name. Mm-hmm. But then when he went rock and roll, he was like, you know, inspired by Chuck Berry, yeah. Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, yeah. And so that's a really great pivot. <laughs> What's your real name? And not just strip a name. I have, is that a song by Drake? It sounds like a song <laughs> by Drake. Reference. Okay, no, we love we love Wheezy. Don't don't know if I love Drake. Um, anyways, today we are talking about what is the correct way to eat pizza, Nicole. And, yeah. and this came up very naturally for me yeah. in my own life because I've been eating pizza roughly the same way for a long time, and I didn't know how weird it was uh-huh. until I believe you shamed me for it. Me? Do you even remember this? Did this even no. register on your radar? Never. <laughs> It literally, it hurt me so badly I that we're judge, doing, we're I bringing just, you to the red table oh my to discuss God. this, Nicole, oh my God. because there are many different ways to eat a pizza. Yes. And this has actually come up in history and culture, in media, in politics, even mm. how people eat pizza. So today we are going to discuss every single method under the sun to eat pizza That's and what huge. could be considered the right way or the wrong way, or does it freaking matter? What did I do to you? Do you want to see how I eat a pizza? Should we just start this off? Because it's not a commonly known method, and I don't have a name for it. I kind of want to call it the bat wing, even though it's the opposite of a bat wing, but I kind of like it. It's like calling a tall guy shorty. Oh, sure. <laughs> this is uh, this is Prince. It's, not, it's prime pizza. Not this is prime, prime pizza. Yeah. This is probably my favorite, like, New York-style pizza. No, you never had prime? No, that's why I got it today. We I'm got like, a I've plain cheese it. pizza. Nice New York style, a little bit crispy on the bottom, and the style of pizza is going to affect the method that you use. Okay. So... I'm holding up a large slice of cheese pizza here, Nicole. You see, it's a little bit floppy, yes. which is why the New York fold people, they'll always fold it in half. Uh-huh. But what I do is I take the crust and I take ranch dressing, boom, mixed with a little bit of hot sauce, and I dip the crust in the ranch, and then I bite off one corner of the crust. Okay. And uh-uh. then, Nicole, I bite off the other corner of the crust. I can't believe I shamed you for this. Well, I entertain them while I chew. Oh, d- hello, my darling. Hello, my honey. Hello, my ragtime gal. So now I'm left with a sort of bat wing situation. I've bitten off the two corners of the crust. Okay, wait. And then this way, okay. I can do a little pinch and under tuck method. So I'm going to uh. pinch the crust here because then you get less crust floating on the outside. And then use the pinky to support. I don't fold. I don't believe in folding. Okay. I know many people do. Okay. But now I'm left with a perfectly erect aquiline piece of pizza. Uh-huh. That can go straight into my mouth. Okay. But the only reason it's erect is because of the, the pinky support. The pinky support keeps it erect. A well-placed <laughs> pinky, Nicole, yeah. can keep pizza erections yeah, sure. for up to an hour. If it's anything over four hours, you got to go to the hospital. Yeah, That's you called gotta priapism. Call, you got to call the number on the mm-hmm. bottle. Josh, did you know that I used to eat pizza crust first as well? When you say crust first, do you mean you would fully eat the entire crust Yes. And then get into the meat of the pizza. Yes. Why? What's your psychology? Well, I think it's because when I was a kid, I wanted to be different. If you want no, I love that. That's true. And I don't know. I think my, my psychology is I want to save the best bite of food last. And everybody knows that the tip of the pizza is the best bite of food. No, the, wait, the tip of the pizza is the best, the best bite for you? In, in my mind, yes. It doesn't fill <laughs> your the- palate enough. It doesn't fill your mouth. I want to feel filled. <laughs> No, don't be crazy. <laughs> so you got to think about, well, the way that the pizza is constructed, how it has a tip at the end, it is inviting you to to eat it from tip first. But I was such a, like, I want to be edgy and cool. I used to eat the crust first. And then people would look at me weird and be like, yeah, I'm eating the crust first. You want to talk about it? Yeah, so, you'd get attention no matter what. Yeah, you couldn't yeah, differentiate yeah. between positive and negative yeah, attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'm, today yeah. you can? I'm just going to take a sip <laughs> So, yeah, I used to eat my pizza crust first, but I would demolish the crust and then I would eat it backwards until the tip. But then, of course, the tip was too cold. Yeah. So it was no Mm. longer the best bite of the pizza slice. So I abandoned it after a while. That's like a a Greek tragedy. That's like a Sisyphean task. My whole life is one big Greek tragedy (laughs) after another. (laughs) I don't think the tip of the pizza is the best for me. (gasps) I'm trying to think of the best bite of pizza. I think it's number four. 
Oh. Number four, because if you're eating it okay. without my stupid bat wing method that I just, for some reason, I don't came think so stupid. naturally to me. I don't think it's stupid. I think this is just you maximizing your pizza eating potential. Yeah. Also, my yeah. brain don't work right sometimes, and it just <laughs> made sense to do this to me. But no, I think if once you take the first bite of the tip, mm -hmm. and then you go side, side, that's two, three. Yeah. Then you're left. Then I guess- But you don't fold. Well, but now bite you're bite number folding. four, I fold. And that's the best bite of the pizza, I think. But then I unfold mm -hmm. by the time I get to like seven, eight. Okay. That's weird. Why do I do that? But if I'm saying that, that the folded is the best bite, huh? Maybe you should be folding it from the beginning. But I don't. I don't like that. I don't like folding Why it from not? the beginning because I think once you fold pizza, you almost turn it into a sandwich in the sense of you're getting bread on both sides, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but then there's a very exciting gush. From the That's cheese true. and the sauce That's and true. the toppings. But it's still a pizza. It doesn't matter if you fold it after it's been cooked. But I think it changes it, it changes not the ontology of what the pizza is. It changes how it interacts with your mouth. Yeah, it's like whenever ice cream samplers, like uh, they tell you to eat it ice cream first instead of the metal spoon first so you can taste the ice cream yeah, first. Yeah, you flip it upside down. So I understand why you're saying that. But I, I mean, when you, when you fold a pizza and you put it in your mouth... You're, you're getting crust on the bottom and then the tip when it gushes out is going at the roof But of it's your a mouth. fun surprise on the tip I when like it gushes it. out. I like, I personally really like it. But another thing, aside from the tipping the best part, I loved like Pizza Hut and Domino's. For some reason, the trough of sauce was also my favorite part. Wait, what do you mean the trough of sauce? So where, where the cheese and the crust meet... Yes. But there's a little bit of a space where the, the pizza artist did not fill it out, like right next to the crust you see right here, how there's there's almost like an indentation of, of redness. There's about a centimeter in each pizza yeah. that is only burnt tomato paste cooked into bread. That's also the older I've gotten, the more I realize that that might be my favorite part of pizza. But when I was a kid, I used to, <laughs> I used to take my index finger and peel that part off with all the all the like white like breadiness like the wet breadiness and just help oh, eat that too that's so funny yeah <laughs> that's um, okay so there there is like an italian dip like a slice of pizza what yeah you just slice pizza. eat a slice of pizza i'm eating a slice of pizza too um there's an italian dish that's just sort of like focaccia with tomato baked into it until it becomes like fully ingrained in there i think you just want that nicole i don't think you want pizza maybe i don't but I also agree with that. Okay, let's let's get into how people actually eat pizza and what the consensus are. We found a poll. 2,000 people were surveyed. This is done by Donato's Pizza via one poll. Legit. Right? <laughs> Super legit methodology. Listen, this isn't it? a population. This isn't statistically significant, but this is helpful to know how much people hate us. 28% eat it what we could call normally. You grab the pizza, you eat it tip to crust, you don't fold mm -hmm. it. 18%, mm -hmm. Nicole, mm -hmm. eat it crust first. Okay. This is the second most statistically significant. So we're not that... Not like You're wild. not unique at all. No. Um, and then 17% are folders. They fold it in half. 14% sandwich two pieces on top of each other. Oh, oh, come on. The John Travolta method. Yeah, wait, what's that from? John, what's the the one a Saturday Night Fever where he puts two pizzas on top of one and then eats it like that? I've never seen. I've never seen it, but I know. Oh I know God, that's a reference. I've just never. So what do you mean? Planet. I've never seen Saturday Night Fever. You think that I would have watched? Eight percent, Nicole. Eat it with a knife and fork. Oh. So that's, I feel like that's pizza determinant. Like, you know, if you got a Neapolitan. It is pizza determinant. If you and it's a, culturally determinant. If you got a Neapolitan pizza that's soggy in the middle, I think you gotta, you gotta use a knife and fork. Some people, some people I've seen, they do, they do this. They, they fold the tip over and they do this. Have you ever seen people do this? Oh, the Spokane Washington undertuck? Is this the undertuck? Yeah. Officially credited to Spokane Washington, inventor of the casserole. Um, no, I do that with a very wet pizza. So like Nicole said, this is very New York pizza. Also, this is a day old that we reheated. We're recording in the morning. Just chill. It's better fresh. Um, it's really but good. New York pizza, people say its largeness, its floppiness is what necessitated the fold. Mm -hmm. Especially because they're like, you know, in Italy, pizza is more of a sit down thing. It's more of a personal thing. And in New York, it's a street food. You got to eat it on the go. I'm walking here. Apparently Al Pacino improv that line because he actually almost got hit by a cab on a set that wasn't as close as it should be. That's correct. Do you know what movie it was? Uh, Taxi Driver. Nope. Dog Day um, Afternoon. He wasn't in Taxi Driver. That was Robert De Niro. They're the same person. Mm -hmm. Al Pacino and Robert De Niro are very different people. What movie was it? A Rhinestone Cowboy, I believe. It was Rhinestone Cowboy? Interesting. I think so, yeah. Anyway, so a Fact lot of... Fact check! <laughs> Fact check! A Fact lot of check. people, they will <laughs> use broad terms about in Italy, they do this. In America, <clears throat> they do this. One Midnight. of the most fascinating things. Midnight Cowboy. Not Midnight Cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> like a rat. It was a song. Sorry. 
Okay, so, Nicole, pizza, right? The origins of pizza go back thousands of years. You can look at the Roman Empire. They're making flat breads outside Ooh, of gladiator stadiums, uh-huh. putting, you know, cheese and, and toppings on it. I'm going to call that a pizza. But the more modern origins of pizza, people think come from Naples, right? Especially mm-hmm. the introduction of tomatoes, uh, right? Tomatoes, New World crop, 1492, mm-hmm. first time they were even able to get back to Europe. Weren't even popular in Europe until the 1600s uh, and 1700s. And even then, it was very regional. So, what country is Naples in? Italy. When did Italy become unified? I don't know. This isn't a history quiz. It should be, though, because pizza is part of history. So 1861, uh, Italy sort of officially unifies. It wasn't until 1948, after World War II, the unified is the Kingdom of Italy. And then it became the Republic of Italy after 1948. So Italy had a king? Oh, yeah. Italy had a king, like, through World War II. I had no idea. But not only that, and the king, I believe, was in... Sardinia? Mm-hmm, and okay. then the Vatican City was, you know, sort of isolated during World War II. But the point is, like, the history of pizza goes back long before the idea of Italian nationality, statehood, or kingdomhood. Okay. And so Naples literally was under... I wrote down a bunch of notes because I went pretty deep on who uh, owned Naples at the time. Okay, so Naples was originally under Spanish control when modern pizza was invented. Was it? Was it was taken over by the Austro- Austro-Hungarian Empire and the Habsburgs. Naples was then conquered. Habsburg? The Habsburg like, dynasty. Like Keith Habersberger? Not like, like Keith Habersberger. No, the, the Habsburgs. They're a oh. uh, long dynastic ruling family uh, in Europe. And then it was conquered by Napoleon in like 1805. And then after Napoleon got ousted, it was under control of the Spanish Bourbon monarchy. And it was renamed the kingdom of two Sicilies because check this out, Nicole Naples at the time was like kind of called Sicily and they had a King, but then Sicily was also called Sicily and they had a King. Mm. So then the Spanish Bourbons take over and they're like, you're close to each other. You should just become one people. And so they literally called it the kingdom of two Sicilies. Mm -hmm. And then Garibaldi, Giuseppe Garibaldi goes on this campaign to basically try and unify Italy under one, you know, personhood because there was so much mounting pressure everywhere else in Europe that they're like, if we remain independent kingdoms, we are going to get crushed. And so Garibaldi rides in on a train to cold in Naples with a thousand people, just 1000 and basically takes over an entire government. And then it was given to the kingdom of Sardinia to then join the United Kingdom of Italy. What does this have to do with folding your pizza? Because people say that in Italy, they don't do X with pizza. They say in Italy, they don't fold their pizza. And I am oh, here to say that Italy is a big, diverse place with a lot of diverse history. Yeah. And so people do indeed fold pizza in Italy. Not all Italians, but in Naples specifically, pizza was a peasant food. Pizza mm-hmm. wasn't a fancy thing where you went to a fine dining restaurant. Is it still fancy? Would you consider pizza fancy? I think it's not fancy, it's but not. they're... It was never a thing that there were rules around because there's no rules around peasant food, right? All this stuff Sometimes of like, do you are. eat it with a knife and fork? Do you do whatever? Mm-hmm. That's all like a sort of very bourgeois means of controlling people. We've talked okay. about this with the history of the fork. And so um, you you go to Southern Italy right now. Uh, you have something called pizza a la portafolio, pizza in a wallet. Pizza in are, a portfolio. Pizza in a portfolio, which are literally folded slices of pizza that are served in paper, served as street food. There's also pizza a libretto, which is a whole pizza. Book? Yeah, it'd be a okay, pizza like a book. Good, very good. And you actually fold that pizza as well. Okay. So anytime people are talking about like in Italy as a generality, mm-hmm. they eat it with a knife and fork. Of course, that is yeah, very common. But you're also explaining two pizzas whenever there's like a bunch of types of pizzas in Italy. A hundred percent. So. And so you go to Rome, right? Uh huh. Pizza al taglio. Uh huh. Pizza al taglio, pizza cut with scissors. I love. That's I a big street food. Love pizza cut with scissors. You do? I love when I go somewhere and they cut pizza with scissors. It makes me feel like I'm in an arts and crafts store. You know the reason I don't like that? What? So at least the places in LA that do this, you order it like by the pound. Yeah. I don't know how much pounds of pizza I want. You can, of course, estimate and show them with you your hands. You can also tell them, like, I think I'm going to want that. Yeah, show, ask them yeah, how much is it's, okay. It's enough of a hard social interaction for me to avoid it. Get out of here. It's not you know what I mean? Call. It's like calling somebody on the phone. It's just like, oh, I'd rather I not. I love calling people I'd on rather the not. phone. I'd rather what? not. What? Meggie, you don't like calling people on the phone? Ew. I love <laughs> hearing people's voices because you learn so much more about them instead of text messages. Ugh. Fair. So Italy... Naples, uh, Sicily, they all have very different pizza styles. And of course, with free migration of people, like those styles cross borders. Sure. We have a lot of Neapolitan pizza here. A lot. And like you said, the style of pizza is dependent on how you eat it. So Neapolitan pizza, which tends to be smaller, cooked at a much hotter temperature, Mm -hmm. 
American New York style pizza. It probably cooked what five, six hundred degrees. Yeah. You know, in a big gas oven. Of course, you, know, you got brick ovens and all that. Sure. But a lot of the major chains and stuff, they're just doing gas or electric ovens. Uh, Neapolitan, it's all just like wood fired, 800 plus degrees, mm-hmm. cooks in 60 seconds. And so it stays kind of wet and floppy. How do you eat that? With a fork and knife. Do you really? Of course. Hold on. We go to local Neapolitan pizza chain, 800 degrees. <laughs> Well, when I, go to, when I go to 800 degrees, you, I got asked for it extra crispy. So you don't have to do that. You asked for it extra crispy? Mm-hmm. So I can no pick way. it up. But like, well, I'm not going to 800 degrees anymore. Yeah, I think they pivoted to a rotisserie chicken restaurant. I don't know what's uh, which going is on. I really enjoyed what they did. They were I, fun. I liked it when I was like younger. But now, like, for example, if I'm going to La Pizzeria de Michel, the famous pizzeria. Pizzeria Antica de Michele. Yeah, exactly. The one that was in Eat, Pray, Love. From I'm, Naples. I'm not going to ask them to, you know, fry it extra crispy or add some random stuff. So I'm just gonna, They're going to present it to me. I'm going to eat it with a knife and fork. Do they cut their pizzas for you at Pizzeria Antica de Michele? I actually don't remember. I've only been once. Because I, I know that is no. a common thing. They don't cut it. No, they don't. How do you feel about that? Because at, okay. at a restaurant called Bestia, which is very much a fine dining Italian restaurant, yeah. even though LA doesn't have, it's not like a strict fine dining restaurant. It's but like it's, Michelin. Is it Michelin star? No. Oh, okay. God, I don't think Maybe. so. But it's just, it's very nice and yeah. expensive and a fun time. They didn't serve their pizzas for a long time. I haven't been in a minute um, with... Any Slice? Sort of they never sliced in it. it? Yeah, oh. it, but they would give you scissors, so you would cut it yourself. Which I love. <laughs> I also love, and I think there's a very valid cookery reason to not slice your pizza. So this plays mm. into why people would eat pizza with a knife and fork. Okay. Right? So it's not New York-style pizza that they're just digging into with a knife and fork. It's like a very quick cooked pie that is cooked incredibly hot that is yes. served to you fresh. Yeah, it makes sense why you would need to use some cutlery because you're because it's so hot, number one, when they serve it to you. Yeah. And it's just so, I mean, this isn't a good representation, but it's just like, like it would be like this and all the... all the uh, It would bleed out. No, everything would just slough off and it that's would, not a good eating experience. Correct. I think by not slicing it, you're you're letting carryover cooking happen. No, you're 100% right? right. You're 100% right. And if you've ever gotten a Neapolitan pizza that is sliced immediately and you yeah. try and pick up a slice, it goes... goes and all of it bleeds off. it's not off. enjoyable. No, and you're trying to scoop. You're like It's like a nacho plate that has <laughs> lost integrity. You're trying to scoop it, it back happens. onto the crust. It happens to the best of us. Yeah, yeah. So I don't, though, go with knife and fork because I, Ever? Eat, I eat almost nothing with a knife and fork these days. Josh. I, I, was at a, I was at an airport last night, and I got like a roast chicken because I just wanted protein and something healthy. And you ate it with your hands. I ate In an every single thing with my hands. I was sucking airport? the bones. I was taking the broccolini it came with and just eating it with my Josh. hands, dipping it in the blue cheese dressing that came with my wedge salad. You are patient zero. <laughs> yeah, and that's fine. And that's fine. I own that. That's right? really bad. Do you like have like what? a little hand sanitizer? Yeah, that? Julia forces it on me. I wouldn't do it otherwise, but <laughs> Julia forces it on me. No, washing your hands is good. You should wash you your should hands. Definitely and I, wash I try hands. before I eat with my hands to wash my hands. <laughs> okay. Thank um, you. <laughs> But no, I just prefer to eat everything with my hands. I know that about you, but like in like a contained area where you like Feel like I wouldn't eat a plate of wet spaghetti with my hands. I wouldn't eat ramen soup with no my hands. No bag spaghetti? <laughs> like, uh, ooh, I do love bag, bag spaghetti. spaghetti. Bag You're talking about like Dominican beach spaghetti? Oh, yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, it became a thing in the Dominican Republic for, and I've asked Dominican friends why this is the case, and they're like, bro, I don't know, but we brought spaghetti with a bag. Um, it's in, literally to the spaghetti beach. you put in a bag and you take it to the beach. Yeah, and you just like all eat it with a fork out of the bag, and, and yeah. that's an awesome communal experience. Yeah, I yeah, would yeah. cut a hole in the bottom of the bag and go, <laughs> And slurp That's it. why you're so unique. That's my meaning. But <laughs> point is, Neapolitan pizza, I'm going to demonstrate it with this pizza. What I do when it's really wet, I will do the Spokane Washington undertuck where I take it and then got, I really heated this pizza too much. It's, it's okay, it's man. It's extra crispy. It's okay. But I will take it and I will fold this part up. I will fold the tip yeah, up. Yeah, that's normal. To contain the ingredients and then I bite and I slurp. And then as it cools down... I get to the end. Yeah, but that's if and only if the pizza is able to be folded like that. Sometimes it's so wet you can't even fold it like that. Do you ever? How about a how about a Sicilian slice like those big focaccia you ones? How oh, do you eat those? you just eat that any way you can. You just yeah, yeah, sh- yeah. I like to though. You okay? You've seen that really lewd TikTok chef named Donut Daddy? You mean the one that like. <laughs> sex with the donut dough? Well, he makes love to the donut dough is what he does. And then part of it is, I, I forgive him. our young audience, but this is out there to consume. He shapes the dough into butt cheeks and then he shoves his face in and sort of breathes it in. But that's how I do with Sicilian pizza. <laughs> he breathes it in? He sort of, yeah, he just kind of like accepts its essence. Like, d- does the dough go up his <laughs> Yeah, it's like it's really all in his face. And ew, for Sicilian ew, pizza, ew, it's ew, thick ew, enough, ew. Nicole, and doughy enough to where I, I shove the whole thing in my face and just go, uh. <laughs> Like, but, but... 
a good Sicilian, it has a little bit of an undercarriage. Like it's a little bit crispy yes, on the bottom. Correct. Yeah, so, Sicilian, for people who don't know, similar-ish to Detroit-style pizza, typically focaccia square, focaccia yeah. thick, a lot of sauce, a lot of cheese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, Ooh. is it a treat, too. I, Ellen B. Spumoni Gardens. Oh, my God. That was a time. Josh literally made us get on three subways. Yeah, many subways. Three subways from our destination to go eat at this place. And the pizza was good. Yeah. It was all right. It was not worth three subway trips. It was worth it for me. And also, you didn't even eat the spumoni. Oh, because it was bad. The, the spumoni was the great. Spumoni. The, the pistachio was green. The cherry was red. The spumoni was great. The spumoni at LNB. What is it? LNB Sp- LNB Spumoni Garden. The Nicole's spumoni at LNB Spumoni Garden. I'm sorry. I didn't really like it. I'm sorry. I'm allowed to have opinions. We on were this also damn near suffering from heat stroke after the hot dog <laughs> eating contest. And I was. I was. <laughs> Solely surviving off of beer and clam strips <laughs> on a hot day. Not a single water. I was just slamming like, Dude. you know, Coors Lights and eating clam strips dipped in ketchup at a shore bar. My favorite memory from that trip, aside from all the pizza, we ate some good pizza there, was the was the, <laughs> the sea witch that came. There was a, a woman who we don't know if she was real or not. <laughs> But then listen, like not to be mean, this is a woman, she's the main, she's the protagonist in her own story, but she literally was like a soggy witch in like a cute little bikini. And she comes and she's like, how many quarters? <laughs> it was, um, Nicole was, I want to play music on the jukebox. Or something. Yeah. She was just in a full like string bikini. And again, she's out there rocking her yeah, life. She looked you go, great. <laughs> you crush it. Um, but she had absorbed more rays from the sun than anybody I'd ever seen. She looked cooked. She looked, she well looked cooked. Done. She looked, yeah. She, she looked like, like a, a turkey leg that, you know what I mean? And again, yeah crushing it um, but all she wanted was to play music from the jukebox and we didn't have any quarters for her she was she was pissed uh, anyways what one last thing i really want to get into about okay, pizza yeah, take it away, take it is away. what i got right here i got a big bowl of orange oh, creamy stuff nicole huh. and this is hot sauce ranch okay this is my official dipping sauce for pizza it's one part yeah. sriracha one part vinegar based hot sauce and like nine parts ranch okay yeah, can if you, you can see it? if you can, can you see it? the orange creamy here, it? and then I take every single bite of pizza and I slather it in I there. I want to try your mix. This has been very controversial. Uh, when I went to yesterday, I went to Prince Street Pizza in New York just to get a plain slice, just to have it. And they literally had a sign that said "No ranch dressing, no blue cheese, none of what? that crap." That's the thing. It's this is another thing that um, is really split on people. Uh-huh. And I was trying to find the origin of sort of how people started dipping pizza in salad dressing. Um, and I found an incredible article by uh, Aditi Shrikant in Eater called How Dipping Sauce for Pizza Became Oddly Necessary. Mm-hmm. And they trace the origins back to Pizza Hut 1958 when they open. They serve cups of warm marinara for their breadsticks. Mm-hmm. 34 years, Pizza Hut remained the sole dip haver until Little Caesars invents crazy bread in 82. So hear me out. Crazy bread remains dry until crazy sauce is introduced. Now, this just isn't marinara sauce. This is crazy sauce. What's it's, the difference? It's basically marinara sauce <laughs> with sugar, and they serve it oh. ice cold like a gazpacho. But the point is, they deviated a little bit. 1984, Papa John Schnatter. Papa John Schnatter is the biggest innovator in the pizza dipping space. Oh, yeah. I did not realize that they have had the garlic sauce. And the pepperoncini. And the pepperoncini. Since they opened in 1984, every single Genius. pizza has come with a single pepperoncini that is steamed and hot and boiling juices inside. Mm-hmm. And then a garlic butter sauce, which is just a combination of hydrogenated oils uh, and love, I suppose. Genius, yeah. And so in 1984, they do that. And that sort of launched a, a race mm. to who could get dipping sauces for the crust and breadsticks there. 1995, this is the next evolution. Little Caesars... They escalate the dipping sauce game with a series of four. Cheesy jalapeno, buttery garlic, ranch, and buffalo ranch. You can trace mm. my love of ranch dressing with pizza to Little Caesars 1995. Wow. And now a, everybody has those dipping sauces. Were you a Little Caesars kid when you were younger? I was a Little Caesars kid by necessity because it was the cheapest. Yeah. But yeah. I preferred Papa John's when I was a kid uh-huh. because the garlic and the pepperoncini. So good. Like that's what it was. You know what I mean? How do you feel about people that eat pizza and leave their crust? I th- listen. I don't like food. They, food waste is a tough thing, and and I know in the, scale, the in the scale of things, tried at the Hague. But the crust is a part of the pizza. The it's crust like, is penance. You must eat your penance 
to um, eat the pizza. Julie does this thing with hamburgers where she takes off the top bun and doesn't eat it. Oh, that's like a health thing. A lot of I know, do that. I know, I but that's a, that's a crust thing too. People are like, oh, I'm saving carbs by not eating <gasps> the crust. What about people that dab their pizza with paper with like with like napkins? I find nothing wrong with oh. dabbing a pizza with napkins. <gasps> I find nothing wrong with dabbing pizza with napkins. Oh sometimes, my God. listen, Ew, I hate people that do that. Sometimes you get a pizza that has too much pepperoni. I am not a big pepperoni fan. I don't get pepperoni pizza. Almost very never. Very rarely. Very if rarely. I, I love sausage. I love speck. even a salami. I like speck. You like speck. You like a nice German cured meat on your... Well, the, listen, the Austro-Hungarian Habsburgs. It's coming full Thanks, circle, King baby. <laughs> um, but no, I sometimes you get too much pepperoni on there. There's too much grease. Okay. I am perfectly fine with blotting it. You know I don't what I mean? Really do. I don't really. I, none of my pizzas really warrant that. And if they do, then I'm probably not going to go there again. What do you, if you go to a slice shop and they have garlic powder, oregano, chili flake, and Parmesan, that is the holy quadrinity. Okay. How, which one, which of those are you using? What order do you put them on? I unscrew the top of the Parmesan. Yes. I make a pile of Parmesan. I screw the Parmesan top back on. I put it on the pizza. I put oregano. I put red pepper flakes. Normally they have, chili, if they have chili oil, that's also good. I put the chili oil next to the Parmesan, uh, uh, tower that I've made and then I eat it. <laughs> Leaning it. Tower of Chisa. <laughs> <laughs> Is that from Extremely Goofy Movie? Yeah, yeah, that's what's up, dude. Oh my God. The greatest great looking pizza in modern Pauly history. Polly Shore. Polly Shore. Shore, man. Great character. I love when the pizza is still warm and greasy, getting the garlic powder on there because the warm grease toasts the garlic mm-hmm. powder. Then I go oregano, similarly blooms it, and then chili flake goes on top. Do not use the Parmesan for me. What? Here's the thing. I don't even, and this is the worst thing I'm going to say of the day, other than all the other bad things that were innuendos, <laughs> but I don't even like need cheese on pizza. I am here for the interplay of burnt mm. bread and tomato. Okay. And the cheese for me, it's just there because people look at me weird if I don't want it. Do you ever take the cheese off? No, but but if there are but places could. that offer cheeseless pizzas by design, okay. 800 degrees used to have one. I remember, yeah. That was called, it was called the Napolitana. It Which was literally, is correct. That is a pizza Napolitana. It was a cheeseless pizza that had, uh, it had Olives? marinara sauce on it. It had capers and it had anchovies. Delicious. And to me, and oregano too. I don't love basil on pizza. I want oregano on pizza. I don't like garlic powder on my pizza. I don't do that. But maybe I might start. Maybe it'll, you know, revolution. I didn't used to be a garlic powder guy, um, but that that's my favorite way to eat pizza. Um, but in the end, there's no wrong way to eat pizza. There's no wrong way. You know way. what I mean? Unless you're sandwiching nope. it, then you should have gotten a calzone. You're somebody that doesn't know what you no. want. What's wrong with you? You don't know how to extract meaning from life. You're just sitting there letting everything hurdle rocks towards you, you know, like you're a doe idea. And then, bam, do you really care what kind of pants the guy who was wearing was shot you? I think I had a stroke. Josh, what was that? What did that mean? What did what? all of that mean? I was trying to do Marissa Tomei from My Cousin Vinny at the oh, end. Oh, I've never um, seen it. Oh, really? Oh, my God. My dad movie. is obsessed with that movie and Marissa Tomei in that movie. I am also obsessed with Marissa Tomei. Marissa Tomei, come on, Last Meals. That'd be fantastic for us. Do you ever wish you could go to Willy Wonka's Candy Factory? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm licking wallpaper wherever I can find it. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> yummy. <laughs> well... Slurping up that wallpaper, Nicole. <laughs> Yum. I go up to that wallpaper. I'm like, okay. Okay, hold on. Well, since our listeners probably haven't met Wonka either, let's introduce them to the online version of that. Nuts.com, your go-to destination for all things delicious, wholesome, and absolutely nuts. We tried their nut sampler and dang, I'm going nuts for those nuts. Best roasted and salted cashews in the game, i tell you what. Now I'm fully confident that everyone can find something they love here. They've got freshly roasted nuts, mouth-watering sweets, delightful dried fruits, and pantry essentials that'll elevate your cooking to a whole new level. I'm definitely bookmarking their artisanal pastas and specialty flower pages for future GMM dishes. And here's the best part. At nuts.com, quality is a top priority. They roast their nuts and pop their corn on the very same day your order ships, ensuring that every bite is as flavorful as can be. You really need to visit nuts.com and see all the variety for yourself. Like at the grocery store, sure, you can get nuts, but don't you want 
bourbon pecans, rosemary garlic pistachios, or maple double dip peanuts? Mm, I know I do. Now let's talk convenience. You can shop a la carte anytime you want. Or if you're like me and hate the idea of running out of your favorite snacks, you can sign up for their hassle-free auto deliveries. Right now, Nuts.com is offering new customers a free gift with purchase and free shipping on orders of $29 or more at Nuts.com slash hot dog. So go check out all of the delicious options at Nuts.com slash hot dog. You'll receive a free gift and free shipping when you spend $29 or more. That's Nuts.com slash hot dog. We, we love, love you, Nuts.com. We all got to eat and we're all going to die. But in the meantime, check out our Last Meals t-shirt and hat available now at mythical.com. The T has a sick Last Meals graphic sick. on Sick. <laughs> Excuse sorry, me. I'm sorry. And a giant, we all got to eat and we're all going to die design on the back. The hat also says, we all got to eat and we're all going to die. Are you getting the picture yet? It's embroidered on the front crown and Last Meals written on the back. Get yours now at mythical.com. Or else. I'm not good at threats. I'm sorry. All right, Nicole. We've heard what you and I have to say. Now it's time to find out what their wacky opinions are going to be. Time to hear what we go. Opinions, I like casserole. Like casserole. But before we get to your casserole opinions, we want to check in on the poll we posted on our Spotify page. It's poll dance time, Nicole. This is completely optional. I'm if you would like to ready. dance while I read the results of the poll, you are fully ready. Uh, make sure to check us out okay. on YouTube Stretching. to see what the dance looked like because now you can just hear it if you're listening to audio. So we said you're going on a $1,000 date to a sushi restaurant. That is a reference to the third date I went on where I accidentally spent $1,000 despite having no money at the time. Who do you bring with you? In the lead, I'm flattered. 53.3% said Josh. 34.9% said Nicole. And 11.8% said Maggie. Okay. I got to stop this pole dance. Yep. Maggie only got 11.8%. Very disrespectful to Maggie out there, everybody. Rude. You should, you should all be honored to share a meal with Maggie, okay? She's the best. Maggie, you deserve to have an incredibly resentful person spend $1,000 on you. And then get in a fight later one. in the night. Not Josh, not me, you. This is this is shady. <laughs> shady. Honored to be nominated. <laughs> All right, let's get into that first opinion. Hi, my name's Jackie from St. Louis. Hey, and Jackie. Yes, I agree. The pizza here sucks. Yeah, but I was do? also born and raised in Detroit. Ah, and go to My weird food combo that I like is toast with hummus and then a little bit of raspberry jam on it. Oh. Whoa. Blueberries, goat cheese. And some honey on top. Sounds so good. All open face. It's a really good, sweet, and savory combination. Thanks. Bye. Okay, I got something here. Go ahead. Should have been tahini. Should have been tahini. Tahini would have really rounded it out. Tahini instead of hummus. Yes. I agree. I think I think the hummus is a little weird because of all the lemon and garlic. Same. And I think if you just did a nice schmear of tahini, I think it would substitute that creaminess you're looking for. But I wouldn't do tahini like straight from the fridge. I would make tahina. Yeah, but yeah. tahina like like the, without without the without the garlic. I would tahini take, preparata as yeah, I call it. Yeah, tahini preparata. You take, tahini is just raw sesame paste, and then yeah. yeah. So you take the sesame paste, you add water to it, you add salt. Typically, you add garlic, parsley, and lemon. I would just add lemon, and then I would use that as my base, and it'd be really good. I would, same, same, let me one-up you a little bit. Ricotta, tahini, boom, bat. Ricotta okay. gives it a bit of a creamy base. Okay. You already got goat cheese going on there. Yeah. But the goat cheese is adding the tang, right? Yeah, to, I don't To me, it. you're so, you're so close. Like, you love eating this, and that's awesome. Keep eating it. Yeah. But I think you should keep chasing that dragon and find the better thing, because I don't think you want hummus on there. I love hummus on toast, but I think once you get the berries in there, you're getting the garlic... You know, that's to me it's clashing a little, a little bit. It's a little but you're so close to making like the best thing ever. Try yeah, it out. Tahini. I agree. Mix it with ricotta or even like a... Tahini preparata. Yeah. Or even like a le- like a yogurt. Lebne? Tahini, yogurt, and Splenda. That's what I'd do. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Mayonnaise is good. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Mayonnaise is I good. Agree. Thank you. I... I I just want people to grow up at whatever they think you they dislike job. about mayonnaise, <laughs> just forget it because it's good. <laughs> I've never met a deli sandwich that I didn't want mayonnaise on. Same. Maybe a couple, but you get the point. It's good. And even even something like Miracle Whip. It's good. It's good. It's I, don't good. Know, I don't know what it is. It might not be mayonnaise. That's like care. mayonnaise it's water good. and corn syrup. It it's good. I'll eat it with a spoon. Mayonnaise Same. is good. Oh, it's pudding. Oh, okay. It's a pudding cup. 
I don't know who in your audience needs to hear this. Somebody. But get over yourself. Thank Eat you. more mayonnaise. Thank you. This is ridiculous. Yeah, you, you're, out, you're out there. Hold on. No, let me soapbox a little bit. You're out there. And you're like, I think mayonnaise is gross because I think I'm better. No, it's good. I, I is, It's good food. I like mayonnaise. I'm not going to eat it out of a jar with a spoon like some sort of you should. creature, but that's okay. No, I don't need to do that. Try it. I don't want that sensation. I don't need that sensation, but I do like mayonnaise a lot. What about I'm, the squeezy bottle? What about the squeezy bottle? You just bottle? squeeze it in your mouth. I don't need to do that. Okay. Okay. Grow up. <laughs> you, I'm, I'm grown. I am grown. <laughs> I, I there there somebody actually did a bit of a scientific analysis, kind of, kind of social science, a little bit of folk science on why people hate folk mayonnaise. Science? They do folk science, right? F O L K. F O L K. Yeah, it's it's like um a thing that has been heavily observed and you can draw inferences from, but wouldn't necessarily pass peer review. So a bit of folks okay. uh, like ginger ale curing stomach aches. Like that's, that's a great example science? of folk science. Oh, so there's something in ginger that does help yes, with yada yes, yada, yes, 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 but yes. it does does flat Canada dry really help dyspepsia? Like no, but your grandma did it and their grandma did it, so you do it. Okay. A bit of a folk scientist uh, did a thing where they talked about how mayonnaise is very similar to bodily fluids. Yeah, I get that. Pus. Very stuff pus like that. Like, very pus like. Very pus like, but so are a lot of those butter, you know, it, that doesn't have the same revulsion of mayonnaise. And so mm-hmm. I don't know if it's just rebelling against like my parents' generation was so into jarred mayonnaise because it was relatively new for them. My dad was born in 46. So I grew up just mayonnaise slathered and everything. Um, I, I think part of it is Your dad associating, was born in 46? He is a full, straight up baby boomer, like straight up post-World War II. My parents were born in, my mom was born in 57. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, my dad was Your old. Your dad was old dad was when old. he had you. That's old. Oh my he gosh. He's dead. Um, well, no, no, because he's old. He died because he was old. But also, you know, <laughs> other things. Um, but anyways, I think a part of it is associating mayonnaise with blandness and people now wanting to be like more worldly, but which is the, why Chipotle aioli... But wow, does fancy. blandness blandness does not equate with like revulsion? No, but I think it started people on that. I think it started people on that train because nobody's revulsed by chipotle aioli. Nobody. A lot of people are repulsed by mayonnaise. But I don't think it's because of the blandness of it. I think it's part of it. I think it started blandness that trickle. Blandness does not lead people to be like, Ugh, that's not what blandness is. You know when a celebrity is. gets canceled? And yeah, then, what about it? Right, it, like, it'll, it'll happen and then somebody's like, yeah, and this one time I met them and like they were a little bit mean to me. So I knew that they were going to commit these horrific crimes. And it's like, no, it's just once somebody started the pebble rolling downhill, then all this mm. stuff, you know, comes out. Interesting. You know what I mean? That's the mayonnaise thing. People are like, ah, oh, it's a little bit bland the and boring. And so I was like, yeah, and it looks like pus and I want to throw up. It just nas- naturally snowballed. Okay. That's fine. But like, grow up. Uh, hey, Josh. Hey, Nicole. Hey, man. Um, I love the podcast. I'm a student in high school and I want to be a chef when I'm older. So I just wanted to point that out. But um, oh. I do want to say that my favorite breakfast has to be like a thick, thick piece of toast mm. with like borsin cheese on yes. the top. Like it has to be like toasted until it's <gasps> hard. Oh my God. And yeah. you put borsin cheese on the top, capers, oh. yes. smoked salmon. Oh. My man. Done. Oh, done man. and dusted. That, my man. Even like two of those. My favorite oh. breakfast in the world. Mm. Keep it uh, up. Thanks. I love listening to the podcast. Mm. Thank you guys so much. Good palate. Delicious. Dude's got a good palate. Yeah. Smoked salmon in the morning. My you know, favorite. Two things. Sometimes a bagel, a, a bagel time Doesn't and place, love them. But yeah. sometimes it's a little bit too tough. Yeah. You know, sometimes I don't want to work that hard on a nice piece of toast. You, so like you yeah. said, you got texture from a little bit of burn on it. Then cream cheese, it like mayonnaise, a little bit boring sometimes. Borson. Borson. What an incredible cheese. It's herbaceous. Borson it's is. garlicky. It's still spreadable. So good. Smoked salmon, boom, Jewish heritage. <laughs> you know what I mean? Those Baltic salmon up there. And then capers, a little bit of acid. The only, would you add anything to this? Hot sauce. <laughs> a few drops, a few drops of yuzu at hot sauce. I would add raw red onion. And I would, this is, the this smorgasbord, is a chore. Smorgasbord. Smo- well, sounds smorgasbord. Like, sounds like smorgasbord. 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 Shout sounds out to like the Danes. It. Sounds like um, it. But I would add raw red onion that is soaked in ice water. I know that's a whole task, but... You love of, doing that. But sometimes I'll just take raw red onion, slice it, pie, pack it in ice wa- water as a meal prep thing. Yeah. Just because it gets extra crunchy. Yeah, you like, like that. that Ooh, and I love a crunchy sweet red onion. That, that acridity is sort of bled out in the ice water process. 
cucumber to me. I don't know. Cucumber is almost too specific of a flavor. Cucumber and fish, it can it can like well for in, in my culture, it's kind of like butting heads of Saturday, which means coldness. Oh, and it can interesting. Make you throw up. <laughs> <laughs> it's made me throw up before. If I eat cucumber, fish. Celery and one more thing. That's folk science, and that's, and that's oh, and I'm, and fo- listen. It's, folk it's science like is foods real. And cold foods. Yeah, it's very. It's, no, I think it's I agree real. with that. I agree with that. This but is a good breakfast, that's a, and that's a great start to a chef career. If you want to be a chef, go for it. You can do it. I was talking about someone being like, uh, you know, mean in an interaction. I want to shout out Felix, who I met in the airport last night. I wasn't mean, but I was a bit antisocial Aww. because were, here's what happened. I ate a bunch of Thai food a little bit hungover in the morning and I had a late night flight and I got the violent hot squirts at Aww. the airport 10 minutes before the flight was supposed to board. That's really bad. And I got really scared. So I was in a bad place emotionally. I'm sorry. But then our flight got delayed two hours, which made me, you know. Bad place emotionally good. further, but then also uh-huh. I got to you, I got to go to the bathroom for a long time. So Felix, if I was cold to you, I apologize. I was just afraid of the hot squirts and the fact that I didn't get into LA till one in the morning, despite having to record a podcast. I'm nice to everyone at the airport. I'm gen- I was nice. I was just he was like, Hey, I'm a big doesn't fan. Matter, and I was kind of just like, Thanks, man. Doesn't matter if I got a poop, doesn't matter if I have to pee. I'm always nice. I was like, this was to the point, and this hasn't happened in a long time where I was like, This will not stay inside me. That's really crazy. I know. Yeah. And I don't know what it was. Maybe it was the alcohol yeah. and the Thai food. Was even that much alcohol though? I've eaten I've eaten a lot more Thai food and drank a lot more alcohol in my life. Maybe it's maybe the traveling. I went to a low traffic sub sandwich shop in All Sparta right. Township, New Jersey, All and right. got the chicken salad. Okay, and Josh. I know chicken salad you can just let set for oh. you can let sit for a while without changing it out. That's gonna make me barf. You know what I mean. So it could have been the could have been the chicken could salad. Could have been it all together. Julia didn't eat that. She ate all the other stuff, but also ate a lot of spices at the Thai food. You're Anyways. just a mess, bro. Constantly a mess. I need to. When I'm home, mm-hmm. I live. I live such a virtuous lifestyle. Do you? Okay. Yeah. Cool. I mean, I, I eat healthy. I go to the gym. I have like an appropriate amount of social interaction. Mm-hmm. If I drink, but even if I'm at home, I like don't like drinking. Um, you. That's not true. But continue. But, no, but I only in social interactions. And I would you're prefer, so social though. But I don't want to be. I would prefer to just Josh, hold I've known myself you up for four years. And there has been times where you have drank like seven days in a row. Yeah. And I've been like, bro. And I hate that. But it's other You're people. Like, it's it's never me. I know. Okay. It's, sure, sure, it's, it's, it's part of like, you know, yeah. part, not to, yeah. I'm, it's, there's no blame on you. <laughs> but part of it is like, hey, if there's a cool opportunity. Yeah, you got to go. I'm going to bring my friends. And but I'm you don't go. need to drink. At, um, we need to go to the luxury brownie launch party. That was cool. That was cool. You know? That's cool. Yeah. And they have free drinks. I love being away from home. I actually oh. love it. I you love pay it. for your home, Nicole. You pay to stay there. It's complicated. You're wasting money every time you leave your house. It's complicated. If you're not. Anyways. <laughs> right, next opinion. <laughs> we can talk about this on another podcast later. Hi, Josh and Nicole. This is Michael Should from Atlanta, Georgia. House? No. Uh, I'm about to start playing a new Dungeons & Dragons campaign Let's go. where oh, okay. I will be playing a muscly dragonborn chef uh, cool. that I've based off of Josh. Let's go. I'm excited to cook Make up all of the strange creatures we'll be fighting. So I was wanting to know what mythical creatures you think would taste the best. Fantastic. I question. personally think that it would be a cockatrice. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Belvedere. <laughs> Cockatrice. A cockatrice is some sort of fire breathing bird, right? Yeah, I think it's our logo. Oh, no, it's definitely a logo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I, what, what would make a cockatrice special? I mean, bird meat, a- any bird meat is I great. I need to look up some mythical creatures because I don't know any off the top of my head. Um, the Wendigo. The Wendigo is, I believe, uh, an indigenous uh, folktale. Oh, no, the Chupacabra. That'd be fun. Actually, mm-hmm. carnivorous animals tend to taste bad. So what I would go with is, he- oh, hear me out, hear me out. Here's a good one. Uh, the Pegasus. Gnome. A winged horse. I want to take gnomes and I want to cook them like mussels. Gnomes are people. Oh. Gnomes are just like people. They're, what? Yeah, it it's says, like. It says they're mythical creatures on the. Uh, no, I know, but a gnome is a humanoid like creature. So you don't want me to eat humanoids? And gnome, gnomes are part of like Icelandic, Nordic folklore, right? Okay, okay, so does that mean. So that means that I can't eat humans, but. Well, you, you shouldn't. Eat, okay. It's like saying you want to eat a leprechaun. It's like, it's so just can you a eat mermaids? Man. What about mermaids? Mermaids you can eat. What now, those centaurs? are not what about Christian. Cent- but what about centaurs and like mermaids? You can only eat the bottom half of a centaur, ditto with mermaids. I think if but I What could, about a reverse mermaid? I think if I could like... Reverse mermaids are I hot. If I could like date any mythical creature, I think it would be a centaur. Centaurs are notoriously sexy. Also though, <laughs> like uh, fawns or satyrs. 
Oh, is that the guy from The Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe? Yeah, because he got all the sexiness of a man's muscly chest with all the horniness of a goat's lower half. What about a cyclops? Are cyclopses mythical creatures? Cyclopes? Cyc- Cyclopes is the plural. Go ahead. Cool. <laughs> Are they available for a date? There are people with one eye <laughs> due to either congenital issues or industrial accidents, any sort of accident. Um, if you want, I don't think have they prefer to be called cyclopes. Anyone, yeah, if anyone who's like lost an eye, do they call themselves a cyclops? I'm sure there is at least one person who's oh, lost an eye that thinks it's really rad. Cyclops, says, Leela from Futurama. Leela is a hot cyclops. She's and my she, favorite cyclops. Does she have three breastuses? No, that's American Horror Story. Ah, okay, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I would say Pegasus because here's the thing: horse meat tastes good, and then a Pegasus also is coming with wings. So that's a brand new cut of meat that you've never been able to have. Ostrich wings are very good braised. We've braised and fried and done buffalo style ostrich wings. That's great. I would say you take Pegasus wings, you break them down into flat and drum and like, who gets the flat, you know? Um, And then, I mean, you braise and fry those. That's, that's going to be really fantastic. It's still gnome for me. Yeah. Nicole's cooking a gnome. I'm going to cook a suckling pig. No, I told you like mussels, like mulfrey. But isn't that, am I, are you how crazy? do you cook gnomes like mussels? Isn't a gnome like the a hat, little person? No, the hat and the outfit is like a shell. You're eating a hat? <laughs> You're eating its hat? <laughs> the hat isn't attached to eat, the gnome. Do you eat the shell of a mussel? Yes, you're saying a gnome's hat is like a mussel's shell, like it's its home. Josh, pull up a picture of a gnome right now. I need to break this down. Josh, all gnomes have a hat, but they don't remove their hat. It's part of them. And then their little outfits. And like, you know how like there's a beard on a muscle? Beard on a gnome. You remove the beard and then you just cook it. Why oh. is this so hard for like, you to Like understand? white wine, parsley, garlic, Why butter? is this? Yes. Why is this so hard so for you to understand? Fries on the side? I literally said mulfreeds. Do you oh. listen when I speak? No, it sounds good. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, it's a good idea. Crazy. Yeah. Well, uh, gnome, gnome frites, Provencal. Um, so on that note, <laughs> thank you for listening to a hot dog is a sandwich. We got your audio only episodes every Wednesday and a video version on YouTube every Sunday. If you want to be featured on opinions or like casseroles, hit us up at 833-DOGPOD1. The number again is 833-DOGPOD1. And for more Mythical Kitchen, check out our other videos. We launch new episodes every week. We'll see you next time. Josh, we're matching. Did you even notice? Look how cute we look. Twins. We're on video? Twins. What the hell? I thought this was a podcast. <laughs>